Hello, welcome back to my garage. Today we're continuing our discussion of how to build really simple cabinets. Um, but even though these cabinets are simple, the nice thing is, is if you can build a simple cabinet, you can build a complicated cabinet. You just do more of it. Uh, the guy I apprenticed under as a cabinet maker used to say, cabinet making is the study of all the different ways you can nail together a box. Uh, of course, we don't always use nails. Sometimes we use dowels and joints, but you, you get the idea. So, unlike our server rack, which was a pretty specialized cabinet, even though it was simple, today we're building a set of nightstands, two nightstands, which will be built-in cabinets, uh, but still pretty simple. They'll bolt to the wall, um, but it's sort of be—I mean, it's sort of a hybrid because these would freestand as furniture. They're just sturdier if you bolt them to the wall, and then also you don't need to worry about things sliding off the back. So, I already did all the cutout. We're using three-quarter inch MDF. The thing about MDF is it's unbelievably heavy. So be super careful when you're cutting it out. I used the table saw. My back is still sore from doing it yesterday. You might want to use a skill saw with a straight edge. Be a little slower, but probably easier on your back because th this stuff's really heavy. When I worked in the cabinet shop and we had to do a bunch of MDF, we used to stack it on the forklift, bring the forklift up to the table saw, and then we could slide it directly up. But probably, like me, you don't own your own forklift, so just be careful. But we've got a whole stack of parts here. One thing I want to show you is the cut list. Now, I do nice pictures for the videos, uh, those are for the videos. The, the way cabinet makers actually do it is they'll just do a really, uh, like a sheet of notebook paper, probably put it on a board or a piece of cardboard so it stays flat, and then they'll just draw each piece with the relevant details, which are basically what joints or edge details it gets and what are the overall sizes. Uh, the reason I didn't fancy this up to you, for you is I just wanted to show you the uh, correct drawing is better than a fancy drawing any day. And this didn't take me long to make. So, we're all cut out. Looking at that drawing, first thing we need to do is take the sides of the carcasses, and each one gets a scribe along the back and a dado. So, we're going to do that on the router table. Let's go get that set up, and I'll show you how we do it. So, I just built this particular router table. It uh, goes into a wing of my table saw, which is Pretty common setup for a garage shop. Like every router table, it's a compromise. I mean, ideally you'd special build one for each sort of stuff you're doing with it. But in a garage like mine, you don't have room for 20 router tables around. So, uh, you know, you, you make the best compromise you can in the space. But I made the um, base plate out of Lexon plastic, which is nice because you can see what's going on and it cuts easily. I am a little worried though, it deflects a little more than I want, because uh, this is a massively heavy router. This is a uh, big heavy duty Chinese plunge router. They don't cost much, they work okay, they're not precision tools by themselves, but if you put them in these router tables you can do some pretty precision work. And uh, then if you're just punching big holes in plywood, they're your only man. So, that dado on each panel is going to run four inches from the bottom to receive the bottom shelf. So, I have my table saw fence here. And usually for laying out joints, your combo square is going to be your best friend. But I'm just going to sort of eyeball the edge of that blade on the router bit like the leading edge of that carbide piece. Get pretty close to four inches. Check again. And then I'm going to run a scrap through to see. So. As you look at the fence, you always want to move it from your right to your left, and that way it will be much less likely to kick back.
So that looks pretty good. It's like a, it's, Dado looks crappy because I was juggling it around and getting the right spacing. But uh, you can see it is cutting really clean in this MDF. That's the nice thing about MDF, it has no grain. So you can usually do some pretty sophisticated things with planes and routers as far as shaping it. Uh, the bad thing is it's heavy and uh, you need to paint it because it, I don't know, it looks like cardboard. So that's good. I'll go ahead and run those two dados in my panels. Always good to keep track of the good sides and bad sides of your wood as you're working so that you can have the good side towards the end side. Now, uh, not as big a deal when you're talking about MDF as when you're talking about nice space grade plywood, but still a good habit. Oftentimes when I'm doing these operations, I use my hip or my, my waist to sort of hold the panel against the workbench or the tool. Uh, that's why I wear an apron, because if you just wear jeans, they'll get worn out in no time. And I went through so many jeans when I was an apprentice, because I thought aprons were dorky. And then since I got this nice leather apron, I hardly ever wear my jeans out anymore. Just a word of the wise. Okay, so here's our next setup. Um, for this, we're just going to cut a rabbit along the back edge of the panel, and that, that'll give us just a little thin piece of wood that we can sand or plane when we scrap it up against the wall. Uh, it's going to be about half inches deep, so that's half an inch for scribing and half an inch to just hold the back panel of the cabinet. Um, this is very similar setup, however, I'm being very careful not to wreck the fence on my new table saw. So I've got a sacrificial board there between the bit and the fence. Um, and then a um, one by 2 cleat to just sort of hold the panel down so it doesn't ride up. You can make a feather board too if you wanted, but this cleat will probably be fine. Especially since I found one with a little bit of an arch to it, so it sort of springs against the wood. Now, uh, it's half inch deep, so I set my combo square to half an inch. And I can just, just feel it sort of contact that bit, so I know it's, it's the right depth. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and touch those, cut those rabbits. When you're doing this, be really careful to get them on the right side of the board. Otherwise, you're going to have to throw out some boards because some of these are mirrored above each other. the serious woodworkers among you are saying, why doesn't he just use a dado stack uh, on the table saw? Simple reason is, I don't have one right now and I'm saving up for a good one because the cheap ones sort of suck. But the router table works fine. You can see how fast it's cutting here and it leaves nice smooth joints. So that's it for cutout. Uh, next we're going to be able to start assembling basically because these are really simple cabinets. So before we go on and assemble this thing, I just wanted to take a minute. Um, it occurs to me that you're watching me cut this out on a table saw and um, joint it on a router table. And um, one of the main you know, premises of my channel is I show you how to do things with simple tools. Now, you could say a table saw and a router table are pretty simple in this day and age. For, for me, they're the only stationary tools I have. And, and clearly, I work them hard because they speed things up. 
But I want you to remember that everything I do here, you could do with hand tools. I have done it with hand tools. I lived in an old farmhouse for a year and a half with no electricity. And even though I had my power tools, they, they did no good. And, um, you know, craft fairs and things, I've often worked without electricity. So just showing you the two joints we just did with hand tools. Now working by hand, it's very important that you mark everything clearly. Number two pencil works good unless you're doing the real precision stuff and then you use a knife. Okay, so I've, I've marked that dado. Just going to take my combo square and go over it with a knife on the top. Reason being, the pencil's easy to see, but the saw will follow the knife. Okay, you don't want to force it, but you do want to cut in fairly deep. Okay. Great. So I feel that there's, there's actually something for the saw to follow. Take your 10 inch saw, which for a cabinet maker is the saw he uses the most. I'm gonna, you don't really need to, <coughs> I'm gonna clamp that because I have a bad wing. And these days it's hard for me to hold stuff with my left hand. But you young bucks out there, you probably wouldn't have a problem. Okay. And then I just carefully follow those lines. Pull the saw back when you're starting to reduce friction. And then we've got about an inch and a half of contact area. And you start going back and forth. And of course it cuts on the push stroke. You also could do that with a skill saw on a straight edge if you're like hand tool light or power tool light and you're not like the full blown crazy hippie only use power tools guy. I've worked with those. I'm not, well I am a crazy hippie but I believe in using the right tools for the job. Hand or power. level it'll go a lot easier. Okay. Now I've got those I've got that sawn out. Yeah. And you want to get a fairly heavy duty chisel. Uh, this is a bench firmer chisel. A uh, bench chisel because of the length and shape it is and a firmer because it has the heavy duty ferrule. These are made in Czech Republic. And they're actually really good chisels, but um, they're kind of metric. So the one that says 5 8 isn't really 5 8 and the one that says 3 quarter isn't really 3 quarter. but I find that it, their 5 8 works pretty well for cleaning out my 3 quarter dados. Now I'm just gonna light it up on the line, which is the bottom of the dado. Take my mallet, and just tap it on. Okay. You see, the, the MDF just wants to split out. So you can just keep that bottom of your chisel nice and flat. Just clean that out. Okay, and that's right now about three quarters of the wood has come out. Do a couple more. Now, once it's the sides are defined, you can just run the side of your chisel right along the side there. And just clean that out. Basically, you have a dado joint. Here's this, this trailer piece fits in there. So, actually, if you were only doing one, that's probably faster than the router table. How are you going to do a rabbit? You could do a rabbit the same way. Use the saw and then clean it out with a chisel. Uh, and I've done them that way. It's, it's kind of tough working along the edge there. It seems to me it's not as stable. So. What I like to use is a rabbit plane. I 
made this one. Uh, it's out of a chunk of purple heart wood, and then I um, cut a piece of tool steel to make the iron, and it works pretty well. It's got an adjustable fence, all that good stuff. And so if you're going to do that, try not to block the camera too bad. I made it so it pulls like an Asian plane. A left-hander would say it's perfect. No. And these clog with chips easy. Just they got sort of a but. Now obviously if you're planing iron wood or something, it's it's gonna take a little more effort than that, but MDF cuts pretty easy and you can see um, it's not really deep yet, but I have that rabbit made. Real simple. If you don't have a specialized plane like this, and you don't want to take the time to make one, and I really should do a segment later on how to make planes, um, you get lots of other planes are able to cut rabbits. This is, this is my block plane. Uh, and I can just gauge a line my gauge and I can follow it with this. It's a little slower, but I've raised small panels that way for like jewelry boxes or whatever, or I've cut rabbits when I had to. Uh, a lot of these bullnose rabbit planes floating around uh, the Stanley, they work pretty well. I used this one when I was cutting that slot for the um, router table. So anyway, lots of ways to do these things by hand and that was kind of a um, a break, so now we're going to go back to building the nightstands. That's all the time we have for this week, but be sure and come back next week for our second part of our four-part mini-series on making cabinets, which focuses on assembling the cabinets. See you then.